Okay, so for this next one, we always first search for the vertical asymptotes, and that helps us with domain, which I forgot to do on the first one. So we set the denominator equal to zero, we get x equals negative three. No factors cancel, so we know it's going to be a vertical asymptote at x is negative three, which we see right here. Then, we know that our x values are going to be all real numbers, except x cannot be negative three. If it helps you to make a number line, remember you try that number. If you plug in negative three, you get error. Pick numbers on either side. If you plug in um, zero, right, you would get two times zero. That's how you can check. Pick a number on either side. So if I try zero, I end up with five thirds. I get out an answer so I can shade that side. If you plug in any number to the left of negative three, it will work. So you can write an interval notation as from negative infinity comma negative three, that's where we stop at our circle, union negative three comma in positive infinity. We use our parentheses because for infinity in open circles, you always use parentheses, not included. For a horizontal asymptote, remember there's three different kinds. You can have none, zero, or leading coefficient over leading coefficient. Because the degrees are the same, it's degree one over degree one. You have the front number leading coefficient over leading coefficient, so two over one is two. So y equals two is going to be the horizontal asymptote, which we see right here, y equals two. There's no slant asymptotes because the degree on top is not larger than the degree on bottom, one larger than the bottom. Now the x-intercepts put zero in for y, the denominator always quickly cancels. So zero equals two x plus five, you solve, isolate x, you get negative two and a half. So there's an x-intercept on negative 2.5, right about there on the x-axis. Y-intercept puts zero in for x, you get five thirds, so about one and two thirds. So one and two thirds right about there. Put in your graphing calculator and zoom standard. Remember you should always see at least more than one image. So zoom out and turn if you don't. Okay, for this next one, vertical asymptotes, we first factor our problem. So x minus three, x plus five in the denominator. We set each factor equal to zero, so we get three and negative five. We know those are both vertical asymptotes and not points of discontinuity because the factors don't cancel. So we draw those vertical asymptotes at ne at negative five and three. Then horizontal asymptote. So remember there's three types. The degree on top is larger, that would be none. If the degree on top is smaller, that's always y equals zero, which it is in this case. There's no slant asymptote because the degree on top is not one larger than the bottom. The x-intercepts multiply by the denominator. So we have zero equals x plus two. Solve, we get x is negative two. So there's a dot on x negative two. It's okay for your graph to cross the asymptote in the center. So this is okay to cross in the center. Y-intercepts put zero in for x and we get negative two fifteenths. So our y-intercepts right about here. Again, it is okay to cross asymptotes in the center. When you put in your calculator, you've got this going on here in the center and then you should have stuff going on above the horizontal asymptote on the far right and below on the far left. Okay, so for this last one, again, you try to factor the denominator if you can, and you can't, so you have to use quadratic formula. And when you use quadratic formula and solve, you get about 7.1 and negative 2.1. So since there's no factors that cancel, we know that these are vertical lines, vertical asymptotes roughly around this area. So roughly about 7.1 and about negative 2.1, the rough estimate. Horizontal asymptotes, there's none because the degree on top is larger than the bottom. Slant asymptotes, degree on top is one larger than the bottom, so we do long division. So it's x cubed on top divided by x squared minus 5x minus 15. Always put zeros as placeholders, so we have no degree two, so zero x squared 
no x, so degree 1, and no constant, put a 0. Leading term divided by leading term. So x cubed divided by x squared is x. Put that on top of the x column. Multiply that by everything in front. x times x squared is x cubed. x times negative 5x is negative 5x squared. x times negative 15, negative 15x. Subtract. So we get positive 5x squared plus 15x plus 0. Leading term divided by leading term. So 5x squared divided by x squared is 5. That goes on top. Once you have filled your constant, your number column, you're done. You're not going to write a remainder. So the line y equals x plus 5 is our slant asymptote. And remember, to find dots to create this line for the slant y equals x plus 5, it's a line. So you can use slope and y-intercept, plug and points if x is 0, y is 5, if x is 2, y is 7, and do dots along that line. Okay, so we said no horizontal asymptote. Degree on top is larger. X-intercepts, we put 0 in for y and solve. When we do that, we cross out the denominator. So 0 equals x cubed. To undo something cubed, you take that cube root. Cube root of 0 is just 0, so we have a dot on 0. And then y-intercept is put 0 in for x. We get 0 again. And you have this graph right here in the center, again, it's okay for the centerpiece to go through your asymptotes. You have one section down here, and then you have one way up here. So you might have to zoom out enter enter to see that. And just remember, again, for domain, your domain is always um, all reals, except you have to look at what you got when you set the denominator equal to zero, and you have to discard, exclude that. So it's all reals except when I set the denominator equal to 0, I got about 7.1 and negative 2.1. So all reals except these two values, or if you were in interval notation, you would do negative infinity, I stop at the circle, comma negative 2.1. Union, I start at that circle, so negative 2.1, comma 7.1, I stop there. Union, 7.1 to infinity. That's interval notation.